All right, folks, the Suicide Squad dropped recently. I don't think anyone would argue with me if I said that the characters are the best part of that movie, and naturally, I think it only fair that we rank the major characters of the film. Let's do it. Folks, coming in the last place, number 18, 18, 18, uh, I should just say, is Mongol, Mongal. I think it's Mongal. Uh, bland character, alien. She jumps on a helicopter and that's about it. Uh, and then gets like her head cut off. It's pretty brutal actually, but disgusting. I don't the orange face, whatever. It doesn't appeal to me. This, this list is very uh, based on nothing. I mean, it's my opinion. It's just really, it doesn't really matter, okay? But Mongol's last. Folks, coming in just above Mongal is 17, Javelin. You'll notice definitely uh, between the back part of the list, a lot of characters that don't have a lot to do, obviously, and in the front, the ones that are more fleshed out. I think that's fair. I think that's obvious. Javelin uh, is, again, an okay character. He has the little accent gag, which is kind of funny. Beyond that, doesn't do much. Folks, number 16 is going to be Sol Soria. She is, of course, the rebel fighter. Only a slight bit more interesting than Javelin and Mongal. Doesn't do a lot. There for a few scenes, whatever. Folks, coming in at 15 is going to be TDK, the detachable kid. Uh, again, has a funny gag, one of the funnier gags in the beginning, and he's played by Nathan Fillion, so I like him. Folks, coming in at 14th is going to be Savant. Uh, Michael Rooker, okay character. You, I mean, the, the film opens with him, and he's got that, I guess, cool scene, but, you know, obviously brutal, of, uh, and it sets the tone pretty, pretty instantly of him just killing the bird, smashing it. Uh, and beyond that, he's kind of a coward, so don't think much of him. Folks, coming in in 13, one of my favorite of, you know, the first batch that just goes and dies is Blackguard. He really gets two scenes, uh, and in the first one he's doing the whole, he's like grabbing the gun gag. He's funny. I like his character. And then on the plane with Weasel, I think he's the, the funniest, uh, except for one character, I think you might know, uh, of the crew at the beginning. Folks, coming in at number 12 is going to be The Thinker. Uh, I really didn't enjoy this character very much. He doesn't say a lot, and when he does, it's pretty average dialogue it's he, he doesn't seem to be super smart per se except for the fact that he's just a scientist working on this space creature uh didn't love it didn't hate it close coming in in 11th place is going to be weasel who is the funniest of the original batch just because he's a disgusting to look at character uh and he's inherently funny just by nature he looks dumb uh, he acts dumb he is dumb and he's funny. Folks, coming in at number 10 is going to be Captain Boomerang. This is a character I despise from the first film, but they give him a lot of heart here. You know, if he, only he had acted a little more like this. They let him a little more, uh, you know, a little more rambunctious, a little more flamboyant. He's, of course, chopping people, you know, slicing their necks with boomerangs. Uh, and I, I dig it. I would have liked this character if this were the version we had gotten in the original. Folks, coming in at number 9 is going to be the big bad Starro. doesn't have much to do or say or much motivation. His final line is very interesting and it's one that was sort of just plopped in there and a lot of people might not give it weight. But his final line is something like that, uh, something to the effect of, I was fine just in space, just floating around. And it just goes to show that this, he's of course attacking people, he's taking over a city, but he is also the victim here. He was taken uh, by the people of Earth uh, to be used for their means. He was just a, a thing in Earth. He really didn't want to harm anyone particularly in the beginning. Uh, but he's okay beyond that. You know, he has the cool power of sticking to people's faces. Not much more interesting than that. Folks, coming in at number eight, we're getting into the uh, main Suicide Squad of this film. You have Ratcatcher 2. She's an okay character. You got the typical, uh, you know, looking up the, the, the younger member of the team who looks up to the other members. She's got that optimism. She's got that hope. I definitely like her character. Uh, but her power is okay. The character itself is okay. Uh, nothing special, so that's why she's here. Folks, coming in number seven is gonna be Amanda Waller. Uh, this is just a great character in general, What, no matter what really movie she's in. She's a tough, hard line, is willing to do absolutely anything, however brutal it may be, no matter the cost, to achieve her goals. She is ruthless, she is badass. I wish we got to see more of her, especially in Batman media. I think she works great uh, with characters like that. Uh, and she's just brutal. I mean, I respect it. I don't respect it, really. It's, it's pretty messed up. Uh, but I love it as a character. It's just so, so uh, much to dig into there. And I'm not sure they used her to her full potential here. Uh, or, and of course, not in the first movie either. So I just like to see more of this character, is what I'm saying. Viola Davis plays it excellently. Folks, coming in just above uh, Amanda Waller is going to be Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is not a character I am as 
fond of as everyone else. I think I think Marco Robbie plays her excellently. Uh, but her chaotic nature just doesn't, it's not funny to me. It's played well, I suppose, but it always comes off as a bit awkward. It only works in a few scenes. She had one of the best scenes of the movie, in my opinion, with that whole guy. Uh, and then when she just kills him, pretty like a psychopath. I mean, it was pretty insane. And then she gives on this whole monologue about uh, red flags. But beyond that, you know, fine. Folks, coming in at number five, we're breaking the top five now. Uh, all, I believe, yeah, with members of the Suicide Squad is going to be Polka Dot Man. Uh, I loved I love this actor. I've seen him in a lot. You know, he's pretty underrated. I don't know how to say his last name, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, and I was pretty hyped to see him going in. He definitely looked more like the comedic relief. And they fleshed him out a lot more than I thought I would, that that I thought they would. Uh, and I appreciate that. I'm a little upset about his death, you know. And I think just because he was sort of uh, the idiot of the team, he was uh, he dropped down a few places on my list. The number four, I just found the four above. I just found more interesting. But he's a good character. Folks, coming in at number four is Rick Flagg. Talk about a character I did not like in the first movie. He was not interesting. He was just some army guy. And this one, he's great. He's you know self-sufficient. He's the team leader. Uh, gets gets the job done, folks. And you know you, you can see, especially with that scene with Peacemaker, where you know spoilers, 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 spoilers. If you didn't know already, uh, but he flips on Peacemaker. That whole fight it just adds so much depth to him. And then they really do send him off nicely, unlike Polka Dot Man. They give him a good death. I would have loved to see more of this character. I'm not saying they shouldn't have killed him off. I think it was good narratively. Uh, but I, I was never thought I would be at a point where I would want to see more of Rick Flagg. Folks, coming in at number three is going to be Peacemaker. I thought for sure this would be my number one character going in just because he looks so cool in the marketing. John Cena, you know, was pretty funny in this role. Uh, but I feel like maybe if they had put in a line before or something like that, or maybe I just missed it and I'm a fool, about why he's willing to do any, everything for peace, uh, and then I'm sure they might flesh that out in the show because obviously James Gunn saw something in this character because uh, the studio, if you don't know, asked him if he had to pick one character to flesh out more in a show, who would he do? And he said Peacemaker. And so I suspect we'll get more of that hopefully. Uh, uh, but it se seems sort of just tacked on there for sake of uh, a nice shifting of the narrative right at the end there. Uh, but he's still a great character. He, you know, he has these little fights with blood sport throughout the movie, uh, and he's a great assassin. And I, I'm hyped to see him in the show. I, I want more of this character. Folks, coming in at number two, a character I did not expect to like is Bloodsport. I just didn't think he looked very interesting from the trailers. I didn't like his costume very much, which when you don't know much about, you know, personality of a character, you just expect, you're really basing a lot of the expectations on the costume. Uh, and I was very shocked when I got into this movie because Idris Elba is, of course, excellent. I should have known that he would be great. Uh, and he is the best character of this film. He's, of course, the main character of this film. He's given the most depth. But I will not deny that he is the best character of this film. There is one more that is my favorite. It's probably your favorite, too. Number one. Folks, coming in at number one is going to be Nanawe or King Shark. He is an excellent comic relief character who is also the sympathetic one. You know, again, James Gunn does have experience with these kind of characters like Groot. Uh, he's hilarious. Every scene he's in, you just want to feel so sorry for him and yet laugh as well. It's so great. They, they find such a great way to juxtapose those two things and balance it. And Sylvester Stallone just plays him so great. The voice and how just, and he says like when he meets the new friends, he's like, new dumb friends. And he's doing, oh my God, dude, it's funny. He, he's a great character. I love King Shark. I love King Shark. All right, folks, so that's all the major Suicide Squad characters. Like, let me know if your list differs. Uh, if you want to give me the full 18 that I did, you know, I won't object. You do what you want. Uh, or just give me a few if you want. You know, I'm interested to see generally where the vibe is at in terms of who likes what characters, who doesn't like others. All right, folks, that's going to be it. I've been Eating Peace Reviews. You've been amazing. I will see you in the next video. Should I do more of these character rankings? Let me know. I liked it. I thought this one was fun. Bye-bye.